Hi, I'm Jessica and I'm one of the nurse practitioners here at Titan Medical Center and I wanted to talk to you today about female hormones. Most of us women think that we have to wait until we're older or approaching menopause to have these hormone levels checked and that's not always the case. Hormone imbalances can happen at any time. If you've been experiencing fatigue, low libido or sex drive, vaginal dryness, stubborn belly fat that you can't get rid of, hot flashes, night sweats, you probably want to have your hormones checked as these can be imbalanced at any age. So if you've been experiencing any of these symptoms, we would love to help you here at Titan Medical Center. Give us a call or text at 727-389-3220 or visit our website, titanmedicalcenter.com. What's up guys, John here from Titan and today I want to do another Titan myth busting segment just for you guys. You might've heard this one, you might not have heard this one, but I do hear it commonly through some of our patients. So let's talk about this myth of taking testosterone, right? So the myth is, is that if you're not working out, you shouldn't take testosterone. That is a big myth out there. So if you get sick and you're not be able to go train, you stop your testosterone regimen. You go on a vacation, you've been gone for two or three weeks, you stop your testosterone regimen. That can do a lot of negative things to you and your body. So what we wanna talk about is testosterone in general, right? So no matter if you're working out, not working out, a good healthy testosterone level is gonna be beneficial for you and your body. The way you feel, what you're doing, every single day of your life, right? So at that point, you wanna make sure that those levels are optimized at the right level, okay? And if you just drop off and stop taking testosterone, it can crash your levels of testosterone, bringing on an onslaught of different symptoms that you might feel. One could be depression, right? You can get stiff, per se. Uh, you, know, you might not have the energy. The libido factor goes down. All these things start spiraling down, and you're wondering why. Well, it's because you're off testosterone. If you really do truly need hormone replacement therapy or testosterone replacement therapy, whether you're training, not training, you should have an optimal testosterone level to feel optimal every single day. So if you don't like to go to the gym, that's fine. That's not a problem at all. You just might not build some muscle or lean up anymore, but you should still be taking testosterone. So I have a ton of patients out there that don't go to the gym, right? They don't care about the gym. They just care about feeling good every single day, having good energy, being able to perform inside the bedroom, outside the bedroom, and that's really it. They could care less about losing weight. They could care less about gaining some lean muscle mass. All they want is the benefits that I just talked about. Plus, mental clarity. We forget about testosterone receptors in the brain and how much that may affect you every single day. In your business, in your home, whatever it may be, you still wanna be on point mentally, right? You wanna be clear-minded, not foggy. And that is a common symptom if you have low testosterone or your testosterone levels crash. So. Don't worry about going to the gym, not going to the gym if you're on testosterone replacement therapy. Make sure you're being consistent with your regimen. That's the biggest thing to take away from this. You want to be consistent with your dosages and with your regimen. Every single day, every single week, every single month, and every single year. If you do this, you'll have consistent, good energy. You'll feel optimal every single day, mental clarity be there. You'll be ready to go in the bedroom and outside the bedroom, whatever it may be. So don't fall for the myth, don't go for it. This is facts I'm talking to you guys, all right? So I appreciate it, and don't worry, I'm gonna be bringing back more great Titan myth-busting segments just for you guys, so you guys know the real truth about things. So Chem Nest 20, I'm looking for a fat burner shot. What's the usual average price? So listen, 
fat burner shots. There's nothing really out there that you inject that really burns fat, right? But we do have some different therapies out there that are injectable, that are great weight loss therapies. They're going to get rid of that fat, visceral fat that's around the stomach or in the body. So when we talk about those different things, we have a couple different options out there. So we have our ECA Stack Plus, which the capsule has real ephedrine, um, caffeine, aspirin, B12, and chromium. It's great for energy, fat burning, and great for boosting the natural metabolism, right? And then we have something like AOD9604, which is a peptide. It's a fragment of growth hormone. It's 176 amino acid sequence chain. And this is great for lipolysis and lipogenesis. What is that? So that means it's good for destroying the fat that you have in your body and using it as energy. And it's good for using the stuff that you're intaking in your diet so it doesn't store as fat and use it as energy. So there's a big, big benefit to this. And you can stack these therapies together. But some of our other really, really monumental weight loss therapies are our Aries injectable weight loss therapy, semi-glutide, and tears of peptide, which is a brand new one we're starting out with here in Titan Medical Center. And these are great for a couple different things. Both of these things really curb the appetite, right? They make sure that um, you're not getting these cravings like you like some people do, and some people just can't stay away from food. And that's the biggest um, obstacle that they face. They want to do it. They're in about it. They're going to exercise, but they can't control what they're putting in their mouth. It's either because, you know, whether it's stress or they're depressed about something or they just like to eat food, right? They're just hungry all the time. So this is going to help you guys curb that hunger. It's also going to help as far as releasing the nutrients in your body at an evenly dispersed level. So at that point, there's no sugar spikes. There's no insulin spikes as far as that goes. And it can help reverse insulin resistance. And this is a big problem for a lot of people out there, especially type 2 diabetics out there or people that are on their way to type 2 diabetes. So at that point, if you're looking for something that's going to be very, very effective, what I would say, uh, Chem Nest 20, is semi-glutide or Aries Injectable Weight Loss Therapy or Tears of Peptide. These are going to be very, very effective. You're going to lose weight in a really, really quick amount of time. Um, you know, these drugs, I love them, I hate them. I love them because they work so good, and I hate them because they work so good. Um, you know, for a lot of people out there that don't want to exercise, they don't want to change their diet, you know, that's the part of being in a healthy lifestyle. And that's something that you should incorporate daily because a healthy lifestyle is not only going to help you lose weight, feel great, it's also going to hopefully help you extend your life right? You want to be on this planet for a long time. You want to live a good quality life too. That means every single day you want to feel as best you possibly can because it sucks, right? If you're waking up and you're 30 years old and you have no energy, you felt like you haven't gotten proper sleep the night before and just don't feel like yourself. Some people, they always get to this point in their life and like, I just don't feel like myself, John. I, I feel down. I don't have no energy. Sex drive sucks. Mental clarity sucks. I have brain fog. And my body's just not responding like it used to. And these are some things that you need to recognize and see these red flags and, and say to yourself, listen, I don't have to feel like this or be like this. I can change things and go on a path where you can really accomplish those goals and feel better every single day. So if you are looking for something like that, to feel better, look better, perform better, the Type Medical Center has a therapy for you. And if it's for weight loss, these therapies are game changers. Um, especially semi-glutide and tears of peptide. You're talking about very to little, no contraindications. That means it's good for a, a vast amount of people out there that might have issues like cardiovascular issues or high blood pressure or any of these different things that stimulants are not good for. So if you're taking a therapy like ECA Stack Plus, these are stimulants. These are not good for a lot of people that have very, very problematic cardiovascular issues. But semi-glutide, tears of peptide, these are great. These are healthy, and you can take these for long extended periods of time. So at this point, it's a real win-win of what you want to do. Um, if you're looking for the best weight loss therapies out there, then our Aries injectable semi-glutide and our tears of peptide therapies are the therapies for you. Hello folks, Cass Fernandez, nurse practitioner at Titan Medical Center. Just wanted to say hello. I want to give you guys some new information about some of the treatments we offer at Titan Medical Center. One being our energy fat burning treatment. It's called ECAs and they're capsules. You can take them up to twice a day. They're going to help with increasing energy levels, helping burn fat, 
and helping you focus more. These treatments can be taken in the morning and in the evening. They can really give you a boost to your day and help improve what you're trying to work on. So if you're interested in learning about some of the other therapies we offer, give us a call 727-389-3220 or check us out online at titanmedicalcenter.com. All right, guys, Valentine's Day is here. It's officially Valentine's Day. So uh, I got my beautiful wife for a card, which is Boo Boo Kitty. That's a special name I call her. And uh, our awesome flowers that I always get. And these guys do awesome, awesome flowers that last for a long time. So if you want something that's going to last for your girlfriend, your wife, whoever it is, these are the ones. They might cost you a little bit more than the ones you're picking up from the side of the road but they're gonna look a lot better and they're gonna last a lot longer. So she will always remember you for that long time period that you're with her or that you got these for her. So let's see what Sharice thinks about hers I got inside. Cause I always get her these. It's hard to be original, like what I'm gonna do and what I'm gonna get her, but I have to come up with the color combinations and some different things that are gonna set it apart from anything else I ever got her. So let's take over the card. Let's have her open her box on camera and let's see what her face looks like on Valentine's Day. Open her gifts. She gave me her gifts early, so it wasn't even fair. So at this point, I want to make sure that I got her and she didn't know what's coming because usually the box just shows up and she opens it and she doesn't even know that I sent it or she's looking around like, well, she's like, I don't know what this is. And then she just kicks the box because most of them should come in this, but some don't. Let's go. Scissors so you can open it up. Oh my goodness, you brought me the scissors too. That's right, the scissors too. Yeah, there is. Oh my god, it says Boo Boo Kitty. That's me. Boo Boo Kitty. <laughs> ah, let's see. I hope you guys are not expecting me to read this out loud. You can read out loud. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, mess up those eyelashes. Yeah. No. Yeah. See what you got in the box. <gasps> yes. Add this to my collection. Someone cares. Someone. <laughs> I always keep these because I tell people someone cares, just someone not me. Cares. <laughs> See, my card comes with something. Uh, for Friday, if that's for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the first. You have to be. Is this Jasper? Jasper AI did this? <laughs> Chat GPT. <laughs> Cat face. <laughs> I love it. Yay. Oh my god, they're so pretty. Oh my god, how pretty. Oh, you guys match. Oh my god, we are matching. He just hasn't noticed. There. It's coming out of the box. Oh my god, it has a heart on it. It smells so good. Oh my goodness, I love this. So this one's kind of different because it's got a drawer. Oh, really? Yeah, it's got a drawer. Oh, shut up. How yep. cute. Yeah, see? Totally <laughs> different. <laughs> None of them had drawers before. Oh no, this is the first. Right. What am I going to put in the drawer? Jewelry? All kinds of little secret treasures. More jewelry? Okay. <laughs> 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 Play jewelry. Look how pretty! Aw, oh, thank you, baby. I love it. Well, fellas, you better take some tips, man. These flowers don't go bad. I've had them for about 10 years in my house. And they smell so good. 10 years? Mm. Oh my god, it smells so good. <laughs>
and we're back with another Cuba's Corner. That's right. Every week, me and my beautiful little wife over here are bringing you guys tips, tricks, and things will hopefully ignite, excite, and intensify your relationship to positive and great proportions. That's right. Every week, we're sharing these awesome tips with you guys. So whether you're in a relationship right now or you're setting up for your future relationship to hopefully be successful, you want to listen to all these tips and tricks and the knowledge we're dropping. Because not only do we have this life experience of being together for 15 years 15. and going through the kids and the day and all this good stuff. And the dogs. We also have a ton of people around us that have went through a ton of different relationship types, good and bad. So we've taken all this knowledge and compiled it up so every week we can deliver you guys this awesome, valuable information. So make sure you guys are storing the memory banks or writing down some notes. So let's get into this week's episode. And this one is really, really important. So make sure you DVR it, record it, or do something with it so you can always go back and talk about it if you need to. Apply right? it. How about apply, apply it? it? Yeah. Yes. Apply it when you need to. Apply Thank it. You. There you go. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. So these three things, the three C's, these are the big three C's of any healthy relationship. That means commitment, right? Yes. What else? Nope. The first one is actually communication. Ooh. Communication is most important. Now I'm not saying commitment's not because that's second yeah. most important. And then third C most important is compassion. That's right. Right? Yeah. And if I had to add anything else on there, it'd be the fourth. And it's uh, the, the wicked stepsister would be trust. Yes. I said the fourth one. C was cookies, but that's John doesn't disagree. But when we talk about the three C's, right? <laughs> so we talk about commitment. Commitment is the main thing that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to commit to somebody or some relationship, right? And this commitment needs to be a solid commitment. You've always heard the expression, one foot in, one foot out. That's not how you want to go into a committed relationship. You want to make sure that you have both feet and you're diving in fully. And you're hopefully your partner, whoever it is, is reciprocating that involvement too as well. And that commitment with you, because that's the big thing that works between two people. As long as they're committed with each other, they can probably get through almost anything that comes to challenge them. Yeah, I mean, commitment means not just like committing in the beginning. It means you have an argument, you don't go run off and, you know, go start scrolling on one of those things that, you know, you could pick up a date or whatever it might be. You know, yeah. I, I don't know what they're called, but I know there's like 500 million apps out there now, right? But you, because you're committed, right? right? You're committed to your That's significant right. other. You love your significant other. You're going to work it out no matter what, right? Yeah. That's part of being committed. So you yeah. need to commit 100%. And if you're not committed, then maybe you should reevaluate mm -hmm. why you might not be committed or mm -hmm. why you do not or have not committed. Yeah. I know I'm probably putting some things in your head you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. I apologize in advance if this changes things for you. But we only want to give the best advice that's right. ever. That's right. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and it's, it's, you know, for that, for the commitment portion, like Sheree said, there's, there's so many different things out there that are trying to pull people apart. And this is only if you let it, right? Mm -hmm. There's temptation out there. Filters. You know, you've got more DMs. filters. You know, everybody thinks the grass is greener on the other side. Filters. Um, but at that point, you shouldn't be thinking like that. And you should really be wanting the commitment with your partner and thinking about how that commitment is. Now, there's some people out there, they have a problem with committing, right? If you're one of these people, you need to start taking the steps. Because if you can't fully commit to your partner, you're never going to have a successful long relationship, a wife, marriage that's going to last. Mm -hmm. Okay, you need to be full on board and uh, not always looking for the next best thing. Right? right. A lot of people get pulled away from this. There's a lot of flash and smoke and mirrors out there. What mm -hmm. people are, are trying to portray and what they're trying to do to your relationship. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't think so, there's a lot of people out oh, there yeah. that are probably jealous of your relationship or want to be in your spot in the relationship. So yeah. just be cautious about these things. And when you're getting advice from your friends, girlfriend, boyfriend, or whatever, you know, it is good to listen, I guess, and get a different perspective. Make sure you're getting the advice from a good but source. Make sure you're getting credible advice. Right. You're not going to go talk to your buddy down the street that just went through five, six, seven girlfriends yes. in, in three months, yeah. right? Yeah. That's bad. Now it might be the best person to talk to. That's right. Now you got another couple down the street. You're friends with them. They've been married for 20 years, yeah. 10 years. I mean, nowadays it's 2023. So, yeah. I mean, if you've been married for one year, I guess that you're doing good. In yeah. these books nowadays. Yeah. So, anyways, we'll drop it down to one year of marriage. Okay. Yeah. One year of marriage. Cool. Get some advice from them. I'm sure they have great advice on how they've been sticking it out. Yeah, I would say five to seven, but that's just me. The next one, right? So we've talked about commitment. 
Oh, communication. Communication. It's okay. He did the second one first. Sorry. I did say the second one first. <laughs> so communications. Communication is key, right? And this is talking about anything that you guys need to talk about or having these awesome conversations that you might have. Learning more about each other, right? Or communicating when you don't like something instead of holding it up and penting it up for frustrations that are obviously or might come along later on when you blow up because you just had a build up. And that's not good either, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and setting the boundaries in your relationship. This is done with communication, saying what you do like, what you don't like, and you guys coming to terms or a, a middle ground and compromising about what you guys are gonna go doing forward. Yeah. Uh, communication is seriously key, and that's not just in relationships. That's everywhere. That's, that's at business, work. That's in your <laughs> personal relationships work. with your friends, or you know, and then obviously- You have to communicate. With People your do not have crystal balls, right? Yeah. So if you had a crystal ball, you probably wouldn't be doing half the things you're doing right now. Yeah. You might not even be watching this show, yeah. but you don't have a crystal ball, do you? So. With that being said, you got to make sure that something's on your mind. Obviously, you want to filter it out maybe before it comes out of your mouth, but you're going to have to eventually get it off your chest, yeah. right? And you don't want to wait until it gets to this level to just spurt it out in the middle of a fight because then that's never that never amounts to anything good. Definitely not. So if something's bothering you, this is the time to communicate it. If you don't like something, this is the time to communicate it. Yeah. If you want something done differently, this is the time to communicate it. Don't let something just irritate you on the side and mm. then eventually you might just start looking for the other side of the fence because of them putting the toilet paper the other way. Animosity starts building. <laughs> you, like. you know, I mean, communication is seriously key because even when you're communicating, it doesn't have to be a negative thing, it'd be a positive thing. Right. Something you do like or something that happens and, and you tell your partner like, man, I really like this. And then it goes in the brain like, oh, cool. Well, my partner liked this and maybe we can do this in the future or whatever it may be. It's, it's really, it's the best thing you can do is communicate. When people don't communicate, um, let's say you get upset with your partner and you just shut down. They have no idea what you're feeling. You're not really expressing yourself. You're feeling worse about it. They might be feeling worse about it instead of you just openly talking about it. And that goes to my next point. When you are communicating, there's a way to communicate with your partner. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be angry. It doesn't have to be mean. You can communicate things that you don't like in, in, a, in an adult fashion, right? Mature fashion, where you just tell them. You know, you're talking to them just like this in a normal remember, voice. Do you remember how I would always use to communicate with you? Uh, yeah. Sharice would wake me up the next morning and start screaming at me. I would not. No, 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 no. So I, it was even worse. This is a way worse, but it actually works, right? I would wait to the end of the night, right? <laughs> Obviously, after his Right long before day. I'm going to bed. <laughs> I would wait until he was nice, calm, in bed, chill. He's real, he's got it all, he's got it all out. He's calm down right and then i would just be like hey can i talk to you about something oh real quick I, that's exactly the what worst, oh the worst word you can hear. <laughs> i need to talk to you about something can i talk to you like, about something just real quick it's always a girl that's saying this to you you ever hear a guy like, can i talk to you about something oh you don't my hear this goodness, right? like, hey bro let me talk to you real quick you know something like that you don't hear that so that's a girl's way of telling you like yeah you're probably not gonna like this but i need to express myself okay <laughs> So, and, <laughs> but you, I didn't do it in the middle of no. like, you know, the day no. I didn't do it over the phone, do it in person. Uh, okay. <laughs> Don't do it on a text message. Okay. And listen, me and John have done things that, that didn't work. And I'm sharing with you yeah. that didn't work. Right. Don't do it on the phone. Yeah. Don't do it in a text. Yeah. Don't do it in an email. Don't do it through your DM. Yeah. Do it in person. Yeah. Do it face to face. Probably There's a much, way. it's it's a little bit different when they can feel your vibe yeah. and maybe might be approached a little bit differently. Yeah. And then wait till it's like a decent time to talk about it. Don't, don't do it while you got three kids running around the house and you're trying to cook dinner and then you're like, Hey, by the way, so, you know, I really didn't like this, 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 and that. Yeah. Eh, just wait for them to, before they go to sleep. Yeah. And then they won't be able to sleep. Don't it's, do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. Terrible. That's the worst. <laughs> you sorry. don't get good rest. I you wake up next day. And, I love oh, you. Oh man, I'm we're so going sorry. This is what it is. <laughs> no sleep for uh, God. <laughs> no sleep for me. That's okay though. Um, but yeah, so communication is key. Whatever you guys are doing, make sure you're communicating properly. If you don't know how to communicate with your partner, there's some exercises out there you guys can look up and really start communicating with each other. Mm -hmm. And it starts with deep conversations, just asking your partner different questions and having conversations and going from there. If you don't like something, talk about it. You guys can figure it out and come to resolution. Um, the next one, compassion. That's well, the last one, right? That's pretty self-explanatory. Compassion, self right? compassion is a big one out there. That's you know sympathizing for your partner, basically, right? 
um, and caring about what happens to your partner, and maybe how they're feeling and stuff like that. You have some people that are so self-driven, I guess, I've seen in relationships, where you know if their, their partner is doing something that might be serious or whatever, and they're so focused in on what they're doing, they really don't care. Yeah. I, I hate to say that, but it really is like, you know, I don't care, she's doing this or whatever, I don't, I don't care, I'm doing this, it is what it is. You know, that's not the way to be. You really wanna you know, care for your partner and make sure that they're comfortable and they're in a great space as well too, mentally, physically, and all the way around. So, I mean, when you're out there and you're with your partner, make sure you're showing them compassion, empathy, that goes right along with it, empathizing with your partner. They're in a bad situation, whatever, making sure you're supporting them. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, making sure you're having compassion for them if temptation arises. So at that point, making sure that, you know, you're, you're putting yourself in their boots, per se, and you're saying, hey, listen, I wouldn't want this to happen to me. I don't want this to happen to my partner. Um, and I'm gonna make sure it doesn't. I think compassion also has to do with like contact, right? A lot of you guys forget contact. And contact is very important. Contact is a hug. Contact is a kiss. Contact is contact. Holding hands, that's contact. Hugging, hu contact. Snuggling in bed, contact. Everybody gets so busy in life, it's just bop, 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 go to the next thing, go to the next thing. I mean, the people that will be able to like yell that to you are the two people standing in front of you right now. Yeah. We are so busy throughout the day that I have to literally think about contact with him just to make sure I get it in. So like in the mornings before like he's running around doing this, I'm running around doing that. I'm like, wait, 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 give me a kiss. <laughs> and it's because I need a kiss before he leaves the house or whatever, you know, it's just to start my day. But it's little things like that that really, really count. And it really makes a difference. Yeah. You, you'd be surprised. Because then the minute you touch your partner any way, shape or form, it is you showing them that you care, you love them and that you care for them. That's right. And the only other part I'll add on to that is trust, and that's the big one. You guys got to set the mm. foundation right away. Yeah. Right at the beginning of the relationship, you need to set that foundation of trust. Make sure you don't break the foundation because trust you got to rebuild the foundation all over and again. The tree so if you've ever seen foundation ever break or crack or whatever it may be in the house or whatever it is, you see. Then, then you then have you to go start buy a whole new house. All over from the ground up. Go out, go got to build a whole brand new house and a brand new neighborhood and everything. So make sure that you have that trust factor in there. And if you guys don't, make sure you guys are building that right. together. And you guys can do that very simple and easy by just communicating about some simple things. So that's it, guys. That's our wonderful show for you guys this Sunday, ABC, every Sunday, 11 a.m. If you don't get to watch us live, DVR us. Or if you miss that too, don't worry. Just go over to YouTube. Type in Tight Medical Center. You'll get to see this episode and all of our other great episodes and all the other cool content the Type Medical Center has. And subscribe. Ding. And hit the subscribe button. <laughs> and if you guys are wanting therapies to increase bedroom enhancing relationships, we have that for you guys too. All you guys need to do is call or text us at 727-389-3220. Check out the website, tightmedicalcenter.com. And we'll see you next Sunday. We'll see you then.